And as you turn to the book of Proverbs chapter 4, we're going to pick up with some things. And for time's sake, we're going to skim over the first few verses of chapter 4. And we're going to pick up with verse number 11. Verse number 11. So as you look at Proverbs chapter 4 and pick up at verse 11, we're going to read these verses. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou, stu- when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. In the word of God, wisdom again is promoted. Instruction is promoted as being so important. I don't know about you, but that is the one request that I bring when somebody asks me, Hey, preacher, how can I pray for you? I say, please pray for wisdom for me. I've never pastored before. This is my first time. And though it's over two years in the running, there's so much going on. There's so many new things. I need wisdom from God. And in every area of your life, you're going to need wisdom. Now we read verse number 14, and here's what the Bible says. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Do you get the understanding of this wisdom statement here in the Bible? It is saying that there's something in life that you should avoid, and it is the way of the wicked. Tonight, if there was a title to the message, I would give it this, the poison of sin. I want you to understand how the poison of sin can take you down for the glory of God. I do not want to touch sin. I should not want to go in its way. I should want to avoid it. I should not want to pass by it. I should want to turn from it. I should want to pass away from the wicked, from the poison of sin. Can anybody tell me what this is on the screen. Is there anyone who understands what they are looking at? What is before you is several different types of poison. If you're from the Midwest or from the South, there's a lot pictured there. But if you were to get into that mess, you may be affected by it. Now, there may be some of you in here who are able to get down in that stuff and roll around and it doesn't affect you one bit. And for those of us who are affected by it, we can't stand guys like you. okay? but when we see that, sometimes maybe you shouldn't look at it because sometimes people can just look at it and get poison ivy. Maybe you're there. I don't know. No, poison is not good. Amen. Sin is not good. And to make this point come alive from Proverbs chapter four, that we are to avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away from it. I want to use poison ivy as that illustration. For those of you who know what this is, when you see it, you are going to want to avoid it. And it should be the same way with sin. I want to show you, number one, that we need to learn to identify the poison of sin from afar. I remember being in Boy Scouts, and one of the first things that they would do when they would take you camping is to teach you how to identify certain things. And one of those things was poison ivy, because you do not want to get around it because of the effects of poison ivy. And so when it comes down to the poison of sin, Sin being anything that we do say or think that displeases God, we need to learn to identify what sin is. Again, I remind you that the book of Proverbs is a book that teaches you how to take a simple one and become a wise and prudent man. But aren't you reminded as you read that if no one instructs a simple one and if a simple one does not receive instruction, the Bible here in Proverbs says that that simple one will become a fool. And eventually the fool says in his heart, there is no God. We do not want to be in that position. We do not want to deny God in our action, in our ways. We do 
do want to avoid, though, the poison of sin. So tonight, very simply, number one, learn to identify the poison of sin from afar. That way you can avoid it. That way you can stay away from it. Now, as I turn to the next picture, I want to show you something about poison ivy. These are pictures of poison. There's the flower of poison ivy. There's the fall leaves of poison ivy. And sometimes people could look at this and say, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing to look upon. A flower, a fall leaf, and the fall colors. But wait a second, I remind you what this is. This is poison ivy. This will harm you. This will hurt you. So our second lesson that we need to learn is learn that the flesh sees a certain beauty in the poison of sin. Your flesh is not going to convince you to turn away from sin. Your flesh is drawn to it. You look at it and almost like it's like the blinders are put on and you can't see that what you are doing is wrong. And so we come to these verses tonight that bring up the reminder that sin is wrong, wickedness is wrong, and we need to turn away from it. We need to avoid it as much as we possibly can. And so number one tonight, identify the poison of sin. Number two, realize that without the help of God in your life, your flesh is going to see the poison of sin and not see it as poison at all. It's going to crave it. It's going to want it. It's going to enjoy the pleasure of that sin. But the Bible says that pleasure is only for a season. And all God's people right there said, Amen. Avoiding the poison of sin. I want you to look at this next picture of poison ivy. Now that doesn't look anything at all like we looked at earlier. But this is a dead vine of poison ivy. And as you read about poison ivy, what you would understand is this. Even though there's no green or no red or no flowers, they say you can still be affected with the poison of what looks to be dead. And here's my illustration tonight and how I want to use it. Learn that poison of sin can still be very alive even if it is dead in your mind. You may have something that you have uh, had in your life at times past and you have quote unquote mortified that. You have put it to death. You have put it away in your life. And there may have been a time where you can look at that or you may be looking at that right now and say, well, the sin of drinking, it's dead in my life. The sin of drugs and its effects in my life, they're dead in my life. The sin of pornography, it is to be dead in my life. Cursing, dead. All these things, dead. But please mind you that if you still get close to that which is already dead, you will take that poison into yourself Again, And I just simply want to make the illustration tonight using some pictures of poison ivy in different places, in different states of its life as poison ivy and relate that to the poison of sin that wants to overcome us. So number one this evening, learn to identify it. Number two, realize that the flesh is very attracted to the poison of sin. And then number three, realize that that poison can still be very alive, even if it's dead to you. Don't go near it. Don't think that you can handle it for a moment. Get rid of it completely. So we look at Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 14 again. Enter not into the path of the wicked. When you're walking down that path on Detweiler Trail and you're going through the woods there and you see a poison that is all over a certain area of that trail, what are you going to do? Walk right through it? Probably not if you know what it is. You're going to avoid it. You're not going to go in that direction, especially if it affects you real good. So we look at verse 15 where the Bible says, Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. I want to take you to another picture. And as we look at the picture, I want to ask you a question. I mean, if you know your stuff, maybe you'll be able to point this out. But just looking at it, 
Leaves of three, let them be. That's what they say about poison ivy. Well, this is the picture I showed you earlier of poison in the fall time that's red. Well, on the other side of the screen, you see a picture of three leaves with a little bit of red to it. But you know what that actually is? If you were to blow it up, you would see the thorns on the stem, which poison ivy does not have thorns to it. This is a blackberry, a young red leaf to the time of the blackberry. And so we look at that and say, okay, as we examine these two pictures, it brings us to a fourth thing. Learn that if you're not sure, don't touch it. Don't touch it. That's what they'll teach you when they're trying to say, hey, this is poison ivy. And you ask the question, well, what if I don't know? Don't touch it. So when it comes down to questionable areas in life, don't even go there. If you're not sure, if it's sin before God, why would you want to reach out and take a chance with it? Don't even go there. Learn that if you're not sure, don't touch it. The Bible has the answers of life. I'm so thankful for the Bible. And as we look at the book of Proverbs, it is very clear that God says that when it comes down to the way of the wicked and the poison of sin, we are not to enter into that path. We are to avoid it. We are to pass not by it. We are to turn from it. We are to pass away. From it. And then I want to make this association. In this picture, we see some of the same things we have already seen about poison ivy. And we're making a biblical application. If you know anything about southern living, you're going to see a, a weed, as some would call it in this, that is not poisonous. We would call that the good plant. For anyone who's been to the south, it's called kudzu. And they brought it over a long time ago and planted it trying to make things look great. And it started in the East Coast and that kutsu just started growing. And you'll go to places like in Tennessee and you'll see this vine that's creeping over all the places where that has not been treated or where there are no goats because supposedly the goats eat that stuff. But in our illustration tonight, all this kutsu on the ground that comes to the base of this tree is relatively good depending on who you're talking to. It's not poisonous. That's the part of the illustration I'm taking. But if you look going up the tree, there's poison ivy. Not only do we see poison ivy in its green state, but you see the vine of the dead poison ivy that's also growing up the tree. Here's the application tonight. Learn, please learn, that good things associate with the poison of sin. Just because it's immoral or just because it apparently looks good on the outside. If you go to that tree that was in the picture, you are still risking being affected by the poison that is there. If you associate yourself with the kudzu, you may just come across the poison ivy. And I say it again, the devil would rather you a good thing in life rather than the right thing for God. You've got to be careful who you associate with. You've got to be careful on what that association is going to bring you in touch with. You have to be careful to be able to see through that association, to identify what is going on, to see the potential downfalls of it. You're going to have to see the fact that the poison of sin could be right around any corner. And I want to make a decision to avoid that poison. I will do not want to pass by it. I want to turn from it. I want to pass away from the poisons of life. And so can I ask you a question tonight? How are you doing? How are you doing with the poisons of life? I want you to look at one more verse in the Bible, but for this verse, we're going to go to chapter 5 and look at verse 14. I want you to notice what verse 14 says. If you don't have it memorized, memorize it. I was almost in, what's that word? Oh, what's the next word? Evil. Then it says, in the midst of the congregation and assembly. You can be around that which is godly. But you can be so far removed from that which is right. Why? Because the poison of sin has bitten you at some point. 
The poison of sin has attached itself to you. You have made some decisions that are not God honoring and God glorifying. And now your body is taken over by that poison. You know what happens when you get taken over by that poison? You become ineffective for God. Now, I'm not one of those guys that can roll around in the poison. I don't remember as a kid really getting it, playing in the woods all those days. But for some reason, as I've gotten older, it seems like I could almost become one of those that could just look at it and get it. A few years back after we just got married, I don't know where I got it. I don't know how I come across it. I don't know if somebody was burning it. I don't know if I brushed up against someone who just had touched it. I don't know. But I got it so bad that it literally put me on my back and I could hardly walk from the poison that was all over the exterior of my skin. And we look at that situation and the illustration and simply say that when the poison of sin attacks your life, it will hinder you living for the glory of God. You will not be living to your fullest potential. Can I ask you, teenager, are you living your fullest for the glory of God? Can I ask you, adult, are you living your fullest for the glory of God? As best as you possibly know how, know how, are you right where you need to be? Could it be that the poison of sin is hindering you from being all that you can be for the glory of God? Maybe it's the sin of pride. Well, I don't think that I should be doing it that way, God. I think I should be doing it this way, like Brother Gillespie so humbly mentioned to us in his newsletter. Maybe it's blatant rebellion before God. Something that you know that you should not be doing, but you are. And that poison is now attaching itself to your life. And before long, you're addressing the poison... Instead of living life. You know how it is. If you've ever gotten poison ivy before or anything of the sort. Now what your attention is giving to is the poison. The effect of it. You're not worried about it if you don't have it. Simple, isn't it? But when you got it, it's what's, oh man, more caladrill, more salt. Scrape it off like Brother Potts told me to do. Or your VBS guy. He works with trees and he's getting that stuff all the time before he was in evangelism like he is. He said, preacher, just put some salt on it like you're going to eat it and then scrub it and then put something over it. I met other people that do that too. Tried that kind of work. Dry it out. Burns just a little bit. But tried that. My attention was going to taking care of this. You get in the shower. It's on your arm. You're holding your arm out here. You don't want it to get underneath the hot water. Because if it's hot water, it kind of brings that out a little bit. And everything that you do in life is now affected. If you got on your legs, you're not walking right. You got it on your face. I can't put makeup on if I'm a girl. You got it on your face. You don't know what to do. And you don't want people to see you. Your life is now affected. And friends, sin takes your focus off of God and causes your focus to be on that which is not good. Why would you willingly put yourself in poison? So many people live life that way. And it doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. God says, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13, 14, to enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. The admonition tonight is this. Avoid sin. Stay away from it. I don't have to name what you struggle with for you to know that you struggle with it. Flee from it. And let God be glorified. He says this. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Do not go in the way of it. It will affect you. No matter how big you think yourself to be. Let's pray.